Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Ainsworth, and we're going to get into yet another study and a mind map on circles, okay? Polar functions, just dealing with circles, though, in the form of R equals A cosine theta and R equals A sine theta. All right, so you can freehand this right here, or you can grab a copy on Canvas. It totally depends on where you are. And if you're my student, and if you're not, just freehand this thing. Just pause the video, get things set up, and then here we go. Or just kind of take notes as you go and, and have fun with it. The goal is to analyze the function first by looking at the attributes that we, that we discovered and found out in, the, uh, in class with the Desmos activity. And here, be able to graph, obviously, without Desmos, without any T84 or Desmos or any technology, just by looking at the characteristics of the function and knowing what you know from again the activity so here we go our first function is in terms of cosine and it looks like a equals or r equals a cosine theta where a is two and then the um then we're dealing with the cosine function okay so now i know that a is two so here's some things that i know a is two and guess what that's positive greater than zero is positive and because of that, it should exist on the right-hand side, and I'll prove it to you, okay? So I'm going to put down right side of polar, or the pole, right side of pole. And if you haven't been through a lesson of why that is, well, here we go. Here's the proof of it. What we're going to do, we maximize cosine theta by using the angle, which gives cosines its maximum. And we know from previous units, like two units ago, that cosine has a maximum at zero uh, and at zero and so on. So uh, zero, two pi, and so on at multiples of two pi. Okay, so what we do is we let theta equal zero and we figure out the max radius. And the max radius in this case, our value, you take uh, r is equal to two times cosine of zero. And we know cosine of zero is one. One times two is usually two, so r is two. And because of that, we have a point, and it's called 2 comma 0. And when you plot that, guess what? It's to the right. <laughs> it's to the right of the pole. Okay? And we know it goes to the pole because if you substitute pi halves in there, you get 0, and 0 comma pi halves is at the pole. Okay, so there we go. We also know that because it's a cosine function and not a sine function, it's symmetric, okay, about the polar axis. And I'm talking about the x-axis, or so polar axis is the same thing. Okay? Okay, so now we know that. We know we also know that the diameter is equal to the absolute value of whatever a is, and that absolute value of 2 is obviously 2. So we know the diameter is 2. And because of that, you can just graph the function. So draw a circle going through the pole and at 2, and there you go, and you're done. And you can back everything and verify with Desmos, okay? So verify with Desmos or the TID4, okay? I'm on an iPad, so we usually use Desmos here to verify. But like I said, you can verify with any graphical software you want, okay? And there is your first polar circle in the form of R equals A cosine theta, where A is two. Okay, now A may be negative, and when that happens, well, you gotta act differently, right? So here we go. So here, A is negative three. That tells me that it's on the left side of the pole. And I'll prove that to you in a second. So left side of pole. And again, <clears throat> cosine of theta gets is, uh, reaches the maximum at zero. So you let theta equal zero and you substitute it in. You calculate r. And r is equal to negative three times the cosine of zero. And again, cosine of zero is just one times negative three is negative three. And that tells me that negative three comma zero is on the graph. And guess what? Co cosine of negative three is over here excuse me, negative three comma zero is over here at, uh, to the left of the pole. And this goes through the pole too as well because cosine of pi halves is zero times negative three is zero and zero comma pi, pi halves is at the pole. So it goes through the pole and it goes through uh, negative three on the x-axis, okay? Now remember, it's over here to the left because, you know, r comma theta, when the radius is negative, uh, you take... You, you plot 3 comma 0, which is obviously right 3 units, and then you reflect it across the pole. So that negative is a reflection. So just keep that in mind. We have same kind of symmetry, so it's, it's symmetric uh, about the polar axis again because we're dealing with the cosine function. So polar axis, I'm just writing down my thoughts right now. 
And what else we know? We, we know that the diameter, okay, is the absolute value of A, which is uh, negative 3. So the absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3. And then you just graph from there. So once you analyze it, you just graph the function, draw a circle going through the pole, and at 3, or on the x-axis at negative 3, however you want to think about it, okay? Depending on whether you're on the polar grid or the rectangular grid. All right, and those are the two functions dealing with cosine. So now so let's switch to sine, right? Because a mind map should include all the variations of whatever function you're studying. And if you really want to study effectively, you'll make a mind map over of a particular function. And you only choose one at a time, unless you want to do a general mind map, and then you include everything, which you will do too. But this mind map just focuses on the circles by, them, by themselves. Excuse me. So you have to take a look at the different vari variations of sine, where A is positive and then A is negative. So we're going to do the same thing with sine now. All right, so let's go for it. Here we have a function. Okay, it's so R is equal to A times the sine of theta. And notice A is 3, okay, which is positive. But this time, because it's positive, it lies above the pole, okay? Above the polar axis, or you can say above the pole. Why? Well, let me prove it to you. Now, sine of theta reaches a maximum not at zero, so you have to switch the angle here. You want to substitute in pi halves, so there is some thinking involved here. All right, you got to think sine of theta reaches its maximum at what angle? Well, it's pi halves, so you have to know what angle to substitute in. And when you substitute in pi halves, you get r is equal to 3 times the sine of pi halves. You work it out. We know that the sine of pi halves is 1 times 3 is 3, so you have to graph 3 comma pi halves. Remember, it's always r comma theta, r comma theta, right? So don't write it pi halves comma 3, that's wrong. Okay, the radius and then the polar angle. And 3 comma pi halves, guess what? It lies above the pole 3 units up. Okay, there we go. That's why I said, you know, when, when A is negative, or excuse me, positive, it's above. When A is negative, like in the next example, it's going to be below. All right, now we have a different type of symmetry here too. So it's not the symmetric about... The polar axis with cosine, this is symmetric about the y axis. Okay, you have to know that. And if you substitute zero in, you get zero. So it goes through the pole. So I'm going to graph the pole right there, and then you draw your circle. Oh, and by the way, the diameter is uh, three. So the diameter here is the absolute value of A, as I keep saying. Okay, what is that? What's the absolute value of three, which is three? So when you draw your circle, you draw it with a diameter of three, symmetric about the y-axis. That's not the greatest circle, but you get the idea. Okay, so now we just have one more to go, right? We have four variations of circles involving sine and cosine, and the last one is r equals negative 5 sine theta. Okay, now here a is negative 5, that's less than 0, so we're talking about it's got to be below, all right, the below the pole. Why? Well, let's plug in pi halves and you'll see. So just like I've done in all the previous examples here, you substitute an angle in, okay, the right angle, and we want to substitute the angle which maximizes sine, or you can think minimizes sine too as well. But sine achieves the maximum at, at pi halves, and then you substitute it in, so you get r is equal to negative 5 times the sine of pi halves, and you work it out. Well, the sine of pi halves is 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. So your point on the graph is negative 5 comma pi halves. Now, 5 comma pi halves would be above the, the pole, but here r is negative. r is negative right here, and so that's a reflection across the, the, uh, the pole, so it's down 5 units at negative 5. So you're going to plot it down here, right? And then it goes through the pole, because if you substitute 0 and you're going to get 0, so it goes, goes through the pole. And then you draw a circle with radius, or excuse me, diameter 5. So two semicircles here. Hey, that one's a better one, okay? Where the diameter is 5. Oh, I didn't state it, but there you go. So diameter, okay, is the absolute value of negative 5, which is 5. All right, and there you go. That is a full-on mind map on the polar circles where you take a look at all the different variations. And you want to practice this way with every function because you have no idea what's going to be on the test, right? So you got to practice efficiently and in a way that as you practice every single variation that exists, 
so that you can uh, basically be prepared for anything I give you on the exam. And you take this study technique and you apply it to biology and physics and all the other classes and you draw mind maps on a particular concept and then you branch out and you talk about how all the interrelated concepts um, exist with that one single concept. And man, you're going to take the take your study into a new level. Okay, it's all about studying correctly, studying the right thing, and being efficient with it. And that's that's also what I'm trying to share with you guys. So um, you get really good at this mind map technique of studying because it is awesome and it can be applied to all the different subjects. Okay, because I used to use it in many different subjects in college. All right. So this is Mr. Ainsworth here. I'm with Great Oak High School in Temecula, California. Hopefully this helped you out, and I'll see you in my next video and hopefully in class. Take care. Bye-bye.